It seems to me that over the last week, I've pretty much only uploaded Zerk versus Protals. So I figured today, let us have a look at not just a single Terran player, but two of them. And on top of that, two of the very best. So spawning right here in the top right hand corner in game number one of this best of five series on a map called... Cryolysis. Thank you, Google Translate, because for some reason I cannot utter the... I keep saying cry cryolysis. I, I, cryolysis, that was actually correct. I keep on saying cryolysis. Or, I don't know, I keep mispronouncing it. Anyways, he's already... <laughs> He's already counting. All right, not too sure what's going on here. These guys are, of course, good friends. But first off, in the top running corner, we have Maru, and then his opponent asking, "Bro, are you okay? Playing with the Red Terran SCVs? We have a beyond." This is from the most recent Olimo League, the 2022 finale. Although I'm not entirely sure if this is like the... So they announced it was the finale and everybody assumed it was the 2022 finale. But then the tweets from Olimo League seem to indicate that this may very well be the very last Olimo League ever. I I'm not 100% sure. Either way, figured this would be a, a bit of a banger to have a look at. Because Terran versus Terran, uh, let's be real. The mirror matchups in StarCraft 2, so PvP, ZvZ, TVT. They generally aren't as exciting as Protoss versus Terran, Terran versus Zerk, and Zerk versus Protoss, right? At least on the whole. That being said, when you have games being played between some of the very best players on the planet, they tend to be very, very exciting. Especially when their names are Maru and Bjorn, because these guys have been playing this game professionally for, well, years and years and years. Obviously, Maru, he hasn't done his mandatory military service just yet. Bjorn had to come back some time ago, but... He's been looking stellar once again. These two have been playing against each other for, I want to say probably like 12 years. Quite literally, actually. I'm pretty sure they've been playing against each other regularly for like 12 years. I would love to hear what actually, hold up. I'm going to try Google Translate again. Google Translate already helped me out once today. I'm going to, give me a sec. Well, I deleted the, I deleted the app off of my phone. Okay, I've been trying for like five minutes. It doesn't work. But maybe someone in the comment section can let us know. I mean, there's probably going to be someone in the comment section that will roughly give us the conversation here. Anyways, um, Cryolysis. This is a pretty cool map, actually. The only thing I don't like about it is pronouncing the map name. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, that is really cool. One of my favorite features on this map is the fact that there's snow. Actually, Cryolysis. Did I just nail it like a couple of times? I, I swear I did that intro for this video like four times and I couldn't do it. Cryolysis. Cryolysis. Cryol. Okay. I think I can get the hang of this. This is definitely no Jaganatha. Or was it Jaganatha? Ooh. There's a, mo a, a Mil Ursa deck. A huge one just wandering around. Anyhow, map is cool. There's uh, snow falling down, which is very festive indeed. Good time of the year to have snow falling down. Maru decided to go for a double barracks start. So he's going to be the one who's the aggressor in the earlier stages of this game. Hellion does pop out. Okay, a couple grenades here, but one of the Reapers ends up going down. Maru posts a question mark. I feel like it was Bjorn who was supposed to be posting that question mark over there. Like, bro, what are you... Why did you... I... You owe me a beer for that one. Actually, you owe me two. What do you mean I owe you a beer? I need at least seven beers now after that terrible early game. Okay. Bro, what the... Oh, no, I, I can't. This is my free interpretation of what the characters mean. I've actually um, tried teaching myself the Korean alphabet. If you had no, uh, yeah, if you have nothing to do during the holidays, uh, learning the Korean alphabet can probably be done in like a couple hours. It's actually like I forgot most of it again, but it's it's actually relatively easy. I uh, I know a couple of languages, but the. Uh any of the Asian languages, basically, is very far from anything that I know. But the Korean alphabet is definitely pretty straightforward to learn. It's just that a lot of the words and the pronunciations are... <laughs> if you didn't grow up there, they, they seem at least relatively impossible to me. Anyhow, what is this? So, Bjorn is sending out a medevac right now with two Reapers, four Marines, and a, and a Hellion. That sounds like a party to me. He does need to be a little bit careful. Uh, not a whole lot of anti-air available just yet, yeah. Mara is going to be making his way back into the, the main base. The Reaper should be able to push this back relatively easily. Now there's a medevac available here as well for Maru. The thing about early game Terran versus Terran is that it oftentimes can feel like... It's, it's incredibly hard. It's very easy to accidentally lose. If you make one little slip up and you're both making the same, you know, group of units, you've both got the same stuff, it's really difficult to actually squeeze out a victory. Coming back in this matchup is incredibly tricky. 
So, so far, this early game definitely not going Maru's way. I mean, he made a bunch of Reapers, but you can really see it reflected already in the supply count. Bjorn right now feeling a little bit better when it comes to the economy. He's killed a couple of his opponent's SUVs. He can continuously taunt him in the in-game chat as well. This is, this is the gold standard, right? So this is what we see all the time. We have one barracks, one factory, one starport. Ravens, very popular in this particular matchup. We barely ever see it being used in the... Or we barely ever see them being used in any of the other matchups. The next multiplayer balance patch is looking to change that because in TVT they are maybe a little bit too good. And then in the other matchups, they're probably a little bit too weak. So, auto turret going down in the main base as well. And Maru has actually lost a pretty good chunk of his workers at this point. I mean, he's lost six of them. Seven? Yeah. That's honestly too much. You really don't want to be losing that many workers at this point in the game. Because, again, if you're both making the same units... I mean, up to this point, they haven't really been making the same units, I suppose. They've been making a variety of whatever they can produce out of the structures they've got. But very soon, they'll have to commit to making the same units. Now the meta effect takes a lot of damage, too. Hmm. I'm not feeling this one, Maru. In the meantime, there's a drop on the other side of the map as well, though he does manage to punish that one. Because Bjorn apparently forgetting about the boost button, or maybe it was on cooldown. Both players are actually taking a lot of losses here. But you'd imagine, right, if you make a, a small little slip-up and you don't really have your siege tank ready, you don't really have the, yeah, mid-game transition ready to go just yet, you may just accidentally lose. So a lot of the games, okay, nice snipe here once again for Maru. A lot of the games are decided by, like, well, literally this point. Your average ladder game of TVT is pretty much already decided at this point in the game. Well, initially, I don't think this was going all too well for Maru. Yeah, he's clawed himself back into this very nicely, mostly because Bjorn gave him a Medivac and then a Raven. Not really what you want, but not a bad situation at all. Mid-game unit comps in Terran versus Terran. They're very much so focused around Marines and Siege Tanks. Usually with Medivacs and Vikings, then eventually Liberators and a ton of Ravens as well. Plus, of course, in the mid-game, you basically just bring whatever you've still got, well, left over from the earlier stage of the game. This match may actually get really crazy really quickly, though, because there's... Well, you know what? I don't think there's really a whole lot here that... He doesn't have interference matrixes, I suppose, but there's not a whole lot here that Bjorn can really do with the army on the other side of the map unless he wants to, well, just roll up. That works, I suppose. Maru's tank right there and not sieged up just yet. He decides to now pull the boys. And what I thought was going to be a bit of a tricky engagement, Bjorn didn't even hesitate. He just went for it right away. In the meantime, though, a lot of SCVs are being killed as well on the side of the Red Terran. Stimpak gets the Knight. So that will make all of this a little tricky. Bjorn's still chatting away at his opponent as he's trying to micro to the best of his abilities. But in the end, Maru has a little bit too much. I decided to fast forward through the first minute of game number two. And these guys, they just keep chatting. Nothing quite like uh, maintaining your social contact while you're in the middle of a tournament. In the middle of a game of StarCraft 2. Fantastic. Love this character. That character is the best. Looks like a guy sitting at a desk. Looks like me right now. Just add a microphone in front of his face. Basically me. Anyhow, next up we find ourselves on Lazarus Wastes. As you may have already guessed, all of the games in this particular Best of Five series they're played on maps that did really well during the Team Liquid map contest. So, uh, yeah, these are the finalists and the maps that just overall were the most impressive. I've already fanboyed over Lazarus Wastes in the past. I think this map is excellent. It's really nice. Look at this beautiful little Reaper entrance as well, right? I haven't really seen that one come into play all too much yet, but, like, that is... A grand entrance, only to be then blocked by a single supply depot, which is apparently enough to block the Reaper from getting into the main base. That is actually such a pretty looking main base. Yeah, pretty cool. Do you think these are like the thrusters? Do you think this is what like is keeping this, uh, this space platform moving? Assuming that, no, dude, no, they're not thrusters. They can't be because this is in the opposite corner of the map. And we've got those uh, those beams happening in the same direction. That doesn't make any sense, man. That's just wasting energy. Maybe it's spinning. Maybe it's spinning just to, you know, keep the uh, the gravity going. That might be it, actually. That could be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they're simulating gravity right here. Lazarus. Lazarus Wastes. 
Interesting map name. I don't know if I like this map name all too much. I know I've gotten very picky when it comes to map names and I apologize for that, but like seriously though, having a good map name makes all the difference. <laughs> He's testing. Oh, it works! That's sick! Oh, I had no idea that that would work. Okay, cool. So yeah, that is a full wall off, but if you throw a grenade in the right angle, I think that also means that if you throw a grenade from here, you can probably boop yourself over the other end of the wall. Could you maybe test that for us on the other side as well, Maru? That'd be really nice. Nope, now you're dead. That was very ambitious, not entirely sure. Maybe he was busy typing. My god, they just keep going. So just to clarify, by the way, uh, let me just look it up real quick. Oh, Limo League 2022 finale. There was money on the line for this particular event. It's about $1,200 for first place price. <laughs> it's like a, I think it was an eight-man tournament. Yeah, eight-player tournament. Astrea, Hero, Bjorn, Clem, Maru, Dark, Rain, or Solar. All of the games are played on new maps, which is pretty exciting. And uh, considering how casual these guys are talking about it, right? Just a normal afternoon. You'd imagine that they're uh, playing for 20 bucks. But no, there's actually a good chunk of money on the line. About two and a half thousand US dollars in total, apparently. So all of it is uh, raised by... Well, the community. I'm hoping they're gonna do more on Limo Leaks, though, because the tweet really was a little bit confusing. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll add it on the screen right now, unless I forget. That really does read to me as if it is the final on Limo Leak, but not exactly sure. Anyhow. Beyond decides to venture out across the map right now with a lot of Hellions. This is right around the same time as Maru just loaded all of his units into Metavex as well. Does Bion see it? No, he does not see it. So this is about to get really strange once again, if he's not careful. Did he spot the tail end of that? I don't think he did. So there's quite literally nothing here to defend- Well, I don't mean to call you nothing, Jimmy. But there's a whole lot of very little um, <laughs> available here for Maru to actually defend. He is committing with the counterattack, it seems. Hellions, you guys should really go. No? Are you guys not gonna go? Okay, now there's a siege tank available. Well, that is weird. I think Bjorn was uh, anticipating there might be a way for him to uh, roll into that natural, but then even though he scouted there was a whole lot of nothing, he still did not commit. In the meantime, right now, Maru gets to the other side of the map. Siege tank is available already, though, for Bjorn, and he does manage to push that back relatively easily. Fair enough. Another medevac drop. <laughs> I don't think if you're, um... Well, that almost looks like 2000 and whatever year is coming up next. Um, if you're trying to study these guys' build orders, I've got a feeling this is not going to be the tightest build order control here so far in the earlier stages of the game, because look at that supply depot here from Maru. My god! Guys! You're professional gamers! Act like a professional dang- No, I'm kidding. I mean, I would love this if I spoke Korean. It's my only problem. Got a lot of problems in life. This is one of them. Definitely not my only, only problem. I can tell you that much. You too. Aw. Love to see it. Okay, matter of fact, drop in the natural, not getting a whole lot done. And we're actually transitioning towards... Yeah, a relatively good mid game. Okay, so real quick. Because I know TBT and the mirror matchups in general can be a little bit confusing. Marines and siege tanks are the bread and butter in the mid game. However... Siege tanks can shoot away further than they can see. So if you have a bunch of siege tanks and your opponent has a bunch of siege tank and you're both sieged up right outside of each other's range, if you scan or you fly forward with like a flying unit, right, or with, with like a liberator or whatever, if you get vision, suddenly your tank can shoot away a lot further. Now obviously because of that, because the siege tanks can shoot away further than they can see, you want to have air superiority. So Vikings are super important, but you want to make sure that you still have enough medevacs as well to potentially doom drop your opponent too. Once you get to enough economy and you have, yeah, resources to pull it off, you can, well, first off, go for drops like this. A little bit crazy. But you can also transition towards Liberators as well as uh, more and more Ravens, and that seems to be the late game of TVT right now. Every once in a while, we even have some crazy uh, Battlecruiser shenanigans in the late game too, but usually not as important. So it's a very delicate balance. You don't want to be making just Vikings, <laughs> for obvious reasons. 
Maybe you'll get your uh, economical advantage and, and, you know, you can get your air superiority and then the three siege tanks that you have are going to be amazing at shooting away at the maximum distance. But then your opponent can just simply stim the marines in and try to get maximum value or maybe even mix in a couple of marauders to take a few of those shots. You also don't want to be transitioning towards liberators too quickly because they're, well, first off, they're expensive, but you need to be very convinced that you've got that air superiority, right? So obviously, usually at some point, the units will trade out. One player will have like 10 Vikings left over, the other one will have nothing. Suddenly, yeah, you need to start pulling rabbits out of heads. That might be the time for the other player that had the Vikings left over to transition towards Liberators. But when you're making Liberators, you're not making Vikings anymore. So suddenly, Doom Drops become a whole lot more potent. It's, it's a very tricky scenario. It honestly really does feel like playing chess. When you're both making the same units, life becomes very tricky very fast. Maru right now going in for a counterattack while taking a lot of damage at home. Reinforcing units are popping out of his production structures as well. Siege tank sieges up and I think this is going to force him to pick up and get him out of there. At the same time on the other side of the map, okay, we do still have Maru dealing a bunch of damage. He's lost a bunch of his SCVs. I don't really like this armory position here all too much. Yeah, losing that one actually sucks. So he's currently getting the... Um, yeah, vehicle weapons level 1, but it gets denied. Sensor tower in a really nice position here, though, for Beyond. At the very least, he's going to see these, yeah, these additional Terran units from the opponent coming in from a mile away. He's now also going for another drop over here. No missile turrets set up just yet. You can obviously, since siege tanks have a minimum fire range as well, you can drop on top of them and still get a lot of damage in. Matter of fact, drop over here actually gets denied as well as Mario was retreating back home. At the same time, on the other side of the map, looks like the siege tanks got cleaned up. Oh my god, what an absolute bloodbath so far in this series. It seems to me that both of these players are just throwing stuff at each other. <laughs> Maru just flew through the opponent's main base. Metavex in the meantime on the other side of the map, also the knight. And big picture here. Yeah, Maru ended up losing a whole lot more. Bjorn still has a whole lot more workers available, but he is oversaturating his bases. Only just now is when the 4th CC starts up. This is the point though where apparently Maru is the one who feels a little bit adventurous because his army is still massive. Siege tank count though in favor here of Bjorn and that's a big one, especially when you're the defensive player, although you gotta be careful that you do not lose them. Okay, one tank sieges up. The rest of the tanks not quite in position just yet. Maru is gonna be setting up shot right over here as these tanks of his are gonna be able to fire over this little crevice. This is rock formation. This like turret shaped object on the minimap. <laughs> Someone pointed that out in the comment section of the previous video. And I, I don't like you, okay? Sorry, sorry that like I call you out right now. But someone mentioned that apparently the rock formations on the minimap. They they look like anyway. Anyway. Big stim forward right here for Maru. Who's now getting rid of a lot of his opponent's tanks. Okay. So I don't think he realizes that there's a, another command center building over here, but does he even care? Despite the fact that he doesn't have a whole lot of economy anymore, his army is still looking massive. Plus two finishing up right here as well for our player in blue. Plus two, plus two already done here for Bjorn. Okay, SCVs are pulled away from the mineral lines as well. They're trying to see if they can overwhelm this. Obviously now you're pushing into this army here without any siege tanks of your own. I mean, there's one over there in the distance helping out. Looks like Bjorn eventually does have enough to break through this, but now he loses tons of SCVs of his own. An absolute bloodbath of a game here so far. My god. Okay. Um. Ah, this is now actually very manageable again for Maru, who really was up with his back against the wall earlier. But now he's finding himself in a pretty good position. Okay. Generally speaking, it's Bjorn who does these YOLO drops, but apparently Maru has been taking a page out of Bjorn's book. Well, I say that. Bjorn has already arrived on the other side of the map with the exact same move. The reverse Uno. Okay. Trying to see if he can snipe all of those SCVs and then potentially get out of there. Uh, you know what? He might not even really need to get out of there. The Marine's desperately running through that, but that stim pack, I mean, in that choke point is not what you're looking for. Bjorn is going to get cleaned up eventually, but not without losing a whole lot of stuff. In the meantime, the same thing is sort of happening on the other side of the map now too, as Bjorn cleans up his opponent's drop. <sighs> okay. So, yeah. 
Look at the, the, the marine losses up to this point. 149 versus 105. Both players losing a very similar amount of units. Beyond still, though, with the supply lead. A lot of that comes down to the fact that he just had more economy, right? I mean, there's a moment, I guess, where the mines... Uh, the mules, rather, helped up uh, with the mining there, but... Liberators apparently added into the mix already. That is pretty quick. But if you find yourself at a good angle, you might just be able to get value. Plus, only just now is when uh, Bjorn really starts mixing in. He's ready for a Doom drop, by the way. I thought he was going to drop on this, but... Anyways, it's only just now that he started really mixing in a bunch of Vikings. Marines there get sacrificed, so... Hopefully the Liberators uh, are going to shoot at the Marines rather than the Siege Tanks. Okay, good kill right there. That tank will probably end up going down. No, it actually does stay alive. But in the meantime, the triple Metavec drop has arrived on the other side of the map. Stimpak activated on these bad boys as well. There's one Siege Tank shooting at that little tunnel there. Not bad at all. In the meantime, though, Maru is engaging here on the right side of the map, going after one of the command centers. And if he fights it, I think he can just kill that. Yeah. We'll be able to shoot that out of the sky. Metafact drops, though. We're the night. But they might be able to go back in later on again as well. Command Center falls. Maru loads up the units into Metafact once again. This is probably the most aggressive high-level series of TVT I've ever seen so far. My god. These guys are going hard. Metafact drops everywhere. That siege tank. Never getting any repairs. These guys don't care about their units, okay? You do not want to be one of the units in any of these guys' armies, in this series anyways. Usually they seem to care quite a bit, but not this time around. APM-wise, you can see that both of these players are going very quickly. It's about 8 buttons a second-ish, I think. Something like that. No, a little less. Anyways, they're very fast is what I'm getting at. A couple of SCVs brought across the map as well here by Maru. Okay, he's trying to see if he can just soak up as much of that damage as possible. Liberator gets the knight, and this is the decisive victory that Pion is hoping for, as he cleans up the army, and with that, the game. Next up, we find ourselves on the map Altitude, and apparently Maru... Okay, he started off this game by sending an SCV straight towards what seems to be the other side of the map. This is the map, by the way, with the interesting formation right over here. Is that where we're gonna plant it? I love explaining this, but I've yet to see it come into the play at all, okay? So this map, it did quite well at the TLMC, the Team Liquid Map Contest, but I, I just, I am not sure if it's ever gonna see its maximum potential. Okay, so there's an eight golden mineral field uh, base over here, right? So a lot of mining potential here. Smyro, so by the way, goes for a proxy barracks over here on the opponent's side of the map. Obviously, though, there's a, a watchtower here in the middle. So the watchtower obviously prevents you from putting your hatchery or your command center or your nexus in the optimal location. So what you can do is kill this collapsible cooling tower, which collapses on top of the watchtower. The watchtower gets destroyed, however, debris is left behind. So after you kill the coolant tower, you also then have to kill the debris, and then you can finally take the expansion. I have tried casting games on this map so far, and I've yet to see it come into play. And judging here, by the way, that Maru is opening up, I... Don't think we're gonna see a whole lot of it in this one either. I mean, maybe. Judging by the fact that he's got double gas over here, I wouldn't be surprised if he's gonna proxy all of the things. Ooh, okay, it's a tech lap on the back of this. So, I guess he's also gonna proxy the factory. Is he? No, no, no. Well, he might. He's got the, the resources for it very soon. Maybe. Anyways, concussive shot marauders are still gonna be kind of kind of nice. Ooh, Bjorn was actually rallying in the perfect direction. No, it's just gonna be a factory to complete the wall off at home. I thought for a second. I, I've seen him do that in the past, where he just proxies his factory as well as the starport. That'd be pretty sweet. Hmm. Sadly here for Bjorn, he hasn't gone across the map, so he hasn't looked around. Maybe something was set right here by Maru, I'm not sure, but. Anyways, he decides to go for the command center here in the natural. Concussive shells is gonna finish up. You can research concussive shells perfectly in the time it takes to make two marauders. There's your fun fact in StarCraft 2 for the day. It takes just as long to produce that as it would two marauders. Let's see. So this is obviously one of those builds that has a lot of potential. 
since you can slow down those units you're attacking very nicely. Oh, nice boop right there, though. Reaper eventually ends up going down. He's trying to get rid of that uh, Hellion, too. So far, though, Hellion a little too far away. You do need to be in sync right here with these units, though, that are firing, right? Yeah, Marauder eventually here, yep, is gonna go down. Ooh, Constructive Shells do connect there with the Hellion, and he does snipe it! Don't lose it! Okay, nicely done! Woo! Okay, well, I think that's it, isn't it? I mean, it, oh, maybe he can... Okay, he can still snipe it, but... This is already a lot of damage being done. And it's not like Maru is going to slow down. He's producing Hellions out of his own factory, too. Okay, now he's gonna create a... He's trying, at the very least, to create a full wall off, but it's very difficult to come back. With the supply depots going down. Yep, not a whole lot you can do here as beyond. Next up, Royal Blood. <laughs> Maru, once again, doing the exact same thing as he sends out another SCV right at the very start of the game. I just want to emphasize that Maru is considered to be probably the... Well, not probably. He's considered to be the best Macro Terran. But no, not today, apparently. Not today. I would love for, uh, ooh, double, okay. Well, double barracks is really good here as well for Beyond. I was gonna say, I would love to see an SCV going across the map to scout or maybe the Reaper a little bit further, but double barracks also works out very nicely here for Beyond, who's now gonna be able to start pumping out those units two at a time rather than one at a time. And for obvious reasons, that makes a massive difference. Are we once again gonna go for the concussive shells, Mara? I, I wouldn't be surprised if he... He's got double gas again. Is he gonna do the exact same trick twice? Tech lab? Yeah, there's the tech lab. Interesting. Man. These guys, they are chatting away for... Just the entire game and the entire series long so far. Actually impressive. What do you, what do you even have to talk about? I think they should go out for tea sometime, man. Maybe get a couple of biscuits in the mix as well. Whatever they like. I think it is about time for a dinner party, Amaro and Beyond, at the very least, okay? Maybe, uh, I know this was played right before Christmas. Maybe, uh, they've caught up since. Anyways, a Reaper scouts it. Big scout. Maru immediately, or Beyond Rotter immediately posts a little laughing emoji there. Goes for a bunker, and he should be able to produce quite a few units here. So what exactly do you do now if you're Maru? Well, I think you're already committed, right? There's not really a whole lot you can get done. So factory comes up at home. I think he's gonna double down. Yeah, so literally the same build here for Maru. Two times in a row in a best of five. It shouldn't work. But with good control, you can still get a ton of value out of these units. The thing is, though, there's already a lot more army here waiting on the high ground. Great grenading there. Bunker is also available. They pop into the bunker. Safety right there for those units. Obviously, they will be able to regenerate HP very rapidly. And that's it. <laughs> oh! Got at least one of them. Not bad at all. Salvage the bunker, go straight for the CC on the low ground, it seems. Uh, SCV's already waiting, there is a Hellion. Okay. Very close. One of the Reapers there ended up getting killed by the uh, SCVs. But there's not a whole lot available for the blue Terran player here. I thought he was going to lose both of those Reapers for a second. Uh, there's not a whole lot available here for the blue Terran player to actually deal with these units in red. So he's losing a ton of mining time here, a bunch of SCVs, beautiful grenade over there again to try and just buy as much time as possible. And that is way too much damage. That is way too much damage. Obviously not enough damage to tap out of the game yet. But I've got a feeling that this is going to be very difficult to come back from. I mean, he's still producing on the other side of the map. Command center is not done yet. I would have liked to see the command center get built over here, but... Ooh, look at that. That's an amazing character as well. Love the look of that. It's a little snowman. Very festive. 
Okay, is there enough right now for Bjorn to clear all of this up? I think there is. And obviously he is, uh, well, another Marauder joining in. Okay, yeah, he is producing quite a bit over here as well. Now going for the Cyclone. The Cyclone is fantastic in this situation. Third gas is already coming up as well, whereas in the meantime on the other side of the map, Maru hasn't even thought about making another expo. Instead, he's decided to go for a Benshee now. Cloaking is coming up as well. That Benshee is going to have to kill about a dozen workers for this to be possible. Nice little bit of pickup micro there on that Marauder. Yeah, nicely done. Trying to get the units right before they die. Okay. But now the Cyclone is out. And Cyclones are pretty sweet. Uh, Marauders don't deal a small... Uh, whoop, yeah. They don't deal a small amount of damage, but still, just not enough here for Mara. Interesting. They just keep going. My god, I had no idea that two players could chat this much in the middle of a tournament. This is definitely the most chatting I've ever seen. Okay. Trying to use the medevac healing as well. Yeah, manually uh, targeting where he wants the heal to go. I think that's what he did anyways. This is rough though. Okay, so maybe the Benshi, maybe the Benshi can pull a rabbit out of a head here for Maru. Who's now finally giving up on this. He goes for a command center on the low ground. The problem is playing macro on the back of this is near impossible. Unless he kills, again, about a dozen workers. Bjorn is sending all of his attacking units to watch the other side of the map. He did end up losing the Cyclone, although he did remake one. Okay, that's one worker. Two workers. Three workers. No. Four workers. He's got Cloak. Five. Okay, scan. Six. Honestly, better than I thought. Yeah. Anyways, the real problem is over here. So Maru did decide to expand on the back of this eventually. That's a very ambitious SCV. Descent to its death. Another scan available, but not enough vision there to actually go after the, uh, the Benshi itself. Very nice control right here for Maru. Okay, eventually that Benshi does run out of energy, but... Bro, do you want to draw? GG. Oh, that I understand. Our final game for today takes place on Star Child. As you may have already expected, both of these players are still chatting away at one another. But Bjorn has decided to go for a barracks right here on the other side of the map, as well as a second one. Now, this is right outside of Maru's main base. So Bjorn looking to close out this series as quickly as possible. It's honestly been very close. Like, considering the fact that they've been chatting as much as they have been, there's a very good chance that... You know, I, I would mess up my control. I would mess up both my micro and my macro. But for some reason, both of these guys still seem to be on point. Even one-handed, apparently, they can still beat us. I feel like they must be playing one-handed here for the most part. Yeah. Maybe double keyboard. Maybe that's the move. <laughs> Don't know how that would help you out, but... One keyboard for your left hand, one keyboard for the right hand. That's the way to do it. Anyways, Reapers are coming up already. Maru has no idea. He goes for a factory right now, so at least he went for a double gas opener. That's that's important. Could have been a, a lot of trouble otherwise. Still definitely not very clean now, and he's actually rallied right on top here. Very few workers here available for Bjorn. Okay, now he's gonna find out. First shot. Ooh, <laughs> he sees it and he immediately leaves. Yeah, so their reaction speeds are still there, which is so funny because their priority seems to be chatting at one another, right? Oh, okay. The Reapers do manage to sneak into the main base. SCV is also helping out, but that is a good trade so far here for Maru, who now goes for a Hellion. Oh, okay, he goes for a Hellion. Post a little laughing emoji in the chat, very important. Always important to taunt your opponent, okay? Never forget, taunting your opponent priority. But as soon as the Hellions come rolling out of the factory, life is gonna get a whole lot nicer here for Maru. Right now things are still a little bit scary, but he needs to wait until the health is back on that one Reaper. It's obviously difficult to go for a command center on the low ground here for Maru, so decides to go for one in the main base. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay, good grenade there once again, but the Hellion, oh, I mean, I said a good grenade. That Hellion actually got into a very nice position. Gonna be able to snipe that last one as well, that last hit point that is. Longest jump right there that any Reaper has ever done, but... Okay. Starport coming up as well on the back of this. 
So, now Bjorn is forced to transition. He's already gone for a factory at home, but tech-wise, this is looking a little bit dire for him. Both players trying to micro what small army they've got to the best of their abilities. No more time for chatting, apparently, by the way. It's been at least 30 seconds since the last message. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I was getting a little bit concerned, man. Mm -mm -mm. Did I tell you guys about my small little fanboy moment a couple of weeks ago? I don't think I have. <clears throat> I, um, I was at Home Story Cup, right? And I have been to a lot of StarCraft tournaments at this point. I've been making StarCraft content for years. But one thing, one secret I need you to know is that I'm still a fanboy of many of the players. Right? I'm, I'm, still, I'm still a huge fan of many of the players. So, Bjorn, Bjorn came up to say hi to me. I was like, oh my god, act cool, Loco, act cool, just pretend like this happens to you all day. But yeah, I, I did have a small little fanboy moment, but I think I played it off real cool. I don't think Maru, or sorry, I don't think uh, Maru wasn't there. I don't think Bjorn noticed that, you know, I was having a bit of a moment. Anyways, um, Hellions and Reapers engaging against Hellions and Reapers. A couple of Marines also joining the fray, putting in some nice supplemental damage. Good control right there from Bjorn, making the best of the situation, but like... What do you do? Yeah, post a little Scarecrow in the in-game chat. That might indeed be your best bet. I, I think that might be your best bet. Now that the Cyclone is out, now that the Raven is out, life becomes a whole lot more difficult. So, really good advantage right now for the Terran player in blue. I mean, in my defense though, in Bjorn's defense, I guess, I've, I've also posted probably about 100, okay, maybe not 100. I've probably posted about 50 Bjorn videos this year. Oh well, oh well, oh well. Look, whenever I put Bjorn in a video, the video performs really well, okay? So you can blame me, but you can also blame yourself for watching them, okay? Thank you, by the way, for watching them, I appreciate you. Because, you know, I like what I do for a living. But some, I, I've noticed some people getting a little bit tired of the amount of Bjorn games that I've been uploading. Look, first off, the man plays very fun StarCraft 2. Secondly, he came up to say hi to me at Home Story Cup, and third, he plays in every single tournament that's available, so there's so many... Yeah, there's so many replays. Especially that second point, though. Not to be underestimated, dude. Skewing the numbers. Anyhow, I think we're waiting right now for Maru to go for a little bit of a move across the map. He's hoping to maybe catch a couple more of his opponent's units. Double Cyclone drop coming up here for Bjorn. Things are looking rather desperate right now. Scan over here reveals that there's a whole lot of nothing. Although there is a third command center building. If he loses these units willy-nilly, then he's in a lot of trouble. Okay, well, Reaper goes down. Okay, there's the lock-on. Oh no, careful, careful, careful. He's gonna have enough for now. Raven here gets locked on too as well, but that's one of the Cyclones going down. Careful, careful. Woo! I almost feel like, yeah, he can just kill that. Oh no. Well done. Um... I think that's it, right? I mean, you can try and go in for another little run-by over here. Look at that raven just staring at them angrily. I think the real question is, though, how in the world is... Bjorn going to deal with these Terran units that are coming across the map right now? There's a large Terran army. He does have a Banshee, but, you know, Cloaking Field, not that big of a deal when you have a couple of those ravens nearby. He could even pop an auto turret if he wants to, but... Okay, just slowly advancing here. <laughs> Bjorn just left without it, GG.